Are you tired of filtering in Excel? What if I told you that you could replace filtering altogether with a powerful new Excel formula? That's what we're going to cover in the next five or 10 minutes. But if we're meeting for the first time, I'm Chris Mortimer. I'm an Excel, Excel VBA content creator, real world consultant and lecturer. I love bringing the power of Excel to people like you. Before we get started, let me tell you about my Excel cheat sheet in this one page, absolutely free downloadable PDF. I've highlighted the 21 formulae and the 13 techniques you need to know in Excel and a few of the things you don't need to know in Excel. So go ahead, download that. Link is in the description below and it's absolutely free. With that said, let's get into the download file. Make sure you download the download file and work along with me. Previously in this series, we've checked out the DSUM formula, super powerful. We've checked out slices too. I love slices. So how does the filter formula compare? And just a quick point about filter. Unless you have a newer version of Excel, you might not have the formula at all. I do recommend Office 365. It may, means you automatically, automatically get the latest version of Excel on your system. So let's go ahead, type in the filter formula, and then let's just notice the prompts that Excel gives us, because Excel always tries to help by giving us the prompts. So Excel is saying array includes, and then if empty. So array is just a computer programming word for a data range, and then include, that's where the magic happens, because we can tell Excel which rows to filter out, and then which rows to display using the filter formula. We're gonna see the magic happen in just a second. Let's go ahead and build the formula. So for the array, I wanna select the whole data set. I'm gonna go control shift left, control shift down on the Windows PC. And then second, we've got this include idea. So how do we go about setting this up? It's some specific notation we need. First, we've got to choose which uh, column in the data do we want to filter by. We've got to go ahead and make that selection. I'm going to filter by home team first. So once again, navigating there using the keyboard and then control shift and down. And then we have to say equals. Just keep an eye on the top of the screen where I'm building the formula. We have to say equals. Then we have to point to a cell where we're going to tell Excel which value in the home team column to filter by. Now you can type this into the formula, but that means it's not as easy to change, is it? So why not use a cell reference here? So this should be enough. I'm gonna hit enter and we can see we've got this calc error. So what does that mean? That's because we haven't told Excel anything to filter by and we get this calc error. Now I haven't seen this calc error before, so it's just a good thing to be aware of. And at this point, we can point out the last component of the formula if empty, you can actually configure what you want to display instead of calc, which isn't particularly uh, user friendly. So we can just say something like no rows to indicate to the user that there's no rows for this particular configuration. But we haven't inputted anything into the cell. So let's go back to our real world problem. Beagle is what we want. So our spelling's got to be 100% accurate. Would be nice to have a drop down menu here. You could try implementing that yourself. Going to hit enter. And then down in the right, what on earth has happened? Can you see what's happened here? So this is one of Excel's new array formulae. So it does what's called spilling. Spilling, the formula spills down. In this case with filter, it's going to spill down and display all of the rows that conform to the filter as we've configured it. Pretty cool. So we can see all of the values for Beagle here. But that doesn't allow us to sum up, doesn't it? Does it? Just with D sum, we got the sum, but we didn't display the rows. With filter, we're displaying the rows, but we haven't yet got the sum. So I would invite you uh, to put a sum formula in. And we've got to think a little bit about the range of cells uh, that we're going to include here. But put a sum formula in to sum up the cell that you're interested in, the cells you're interested in. I know I'm interested in returns home when. I've got to think about the range I point to here, because what if filter returns more rows uh, for a different value? I know there's 773, or rather the data set goes down to 773. So I'm going to hit enter there. And we can see now we've returned a value of 13.92 for Beagle. Alt-H-B-A Alt is going to give us our borders there. So let's check it. As always, we check it at least by comparison with at least one other method. So Beagle with DSUM, we've got the DSUM formula here, seems to be okay. What about with slices? So if we switch off the odd slicer and then with the home team, just go to Beagle, we can see we've got 13.92 there. 
pretty cool. The same thing, three different ways. But we've only done one criteria there, haven't we? We've only done home team. We actually want to look at more criteria than that. So we want to check out this odds category column. We want to include that in the calculation. So with the new filter formula, how do we do multiple criteria? It's a little bit confusing. You actually have to use a an asterisk, a multiplication sign. That's not going to multiply anything. It's just saying we want to use multiple criteria here. And then the setup is the same. So we go to the column that contains the criteria we want to filter by. So in this case, odds category. And then we hit equals back to the top and we go to the cell that contains the value we want to filter by, which I'm going to put it in this cell here. So can you see that setup? Make sure you practice this, this yourself. The key thing is that multiplication. To me, it's counterintuitive to have multiplication there. Why don't you just use a comma or something else? That's how it works. Let's see if we can get it set up now. We've now got a value error. Okay, let's see what's going on here. I think everything's okay. Is it just because I don't have a value in this cell? So let's go ahead, Control C and Control Alt V and V for values here. And then we still have a value error. Okay, can I fix this live? What on earth is going on? I think what we need to do here is use some brackets. Yeah, brackets in here. And then one more set of brackets. Is this the final piece in the jigsaw? We're going to see, and then we hit enter. Then what's going to happen to it? And we have got the spill form in the back. So you do need those brackets. You can see a set of brackets here and a set of brackets here, but that does seem to get the job done. Okay, so got our filter on, and we've got a value of 6.42 being returned here. Okay, how's that looking? Well, Let's go ahead and check with our um, other techniques here. So with dsum more than or equal to one and less than two here, we've got 6.42 and then slices. Let's go ahead, beagle, and it's more than uh, one, more than or equal to one, less than two. And we can see we've managed to do it with slices as well. So let me know in the comments, which one do you prefer? Do you prefer dsum, slices, or um, the filter formula, the filter formula, I love the way it displays the rows for us. I can see it's on dashboards. So when you do some filtering, then you want the client to be able to see the filter data at the bottom of a dashboard. It would have to be at the bottom because you don't want the data spilling into anything else. I can see some really nice applications of the filter formula and probably in some capacity, these three combined together. Let me know in the comments, are you going to be using the filter formula? Take care. Until the next video, I'll see you then.